On March 30th, 2022, the Helsinki District Court unanimously dismissed all charges against Pavi Resonen, who was put on trial for hate speech after expressing her deeply held beliefs in a 2019 tweet, an almost 20-year-old pamphlet, and a radio discussion that was taken out of context. Although the court stated that, quote, it is not for the district court to interpret biblical concepts, the prosecution has appealed the not guilty verdict, and Rezanen faces another free speech trial in summer 2023. Hi, Pavi. It's so nice to sit down with you again. Last time we talked, the free speech trial was looming. Mm -hmm. But since then, the Helsinki District Court has acquitted you of the ridiculous hate speech charges that the prosecution had brought against you. Yes. And we all celebrated that decision. So could you share with us what it felt like when you heard the news that the court had decided in your favor? Yes, great joy. And I was so thankful for God and and for all supporters who ha had supported me and also for my lawyer, <laughs> very good lawyer and, and all the team, ADF, <laughs> all these who had worked hard for, for these results. I was happy for the freedom of speech and religion because I, I think that it was very important for Finland, not only for Christians, but also for other people. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And it really was a great result. And yes. we hope that it um, had stayed there. But unfortunately, the case didn't end with the district court's acquittal. Mm. And it's unusual, but Finland's legal system allows for the prosecution to appeal a not guilty verdict. Yeah. And that's what they did. How does it feel to be facing a second trial uh, for something that happened so long ago mm. after being found unanimously not guilty, like you said? Yes, of course, I was disappointed to hear that it takes so long time. The process is still going on. I'm still suspected of crime. I have been it for years and it has been very public in media. It has also taken a lot of my time and it has also had effects uh, to my work in Parliament. For example, when we have the elections, I'm on the list of those who are suspected of, of crime. So it has been quite hard time. I, I think that the process itself has been some kind of punishment, even though I got the acquittal from, from the court. It has been quite hard time, but at the same time, I have felt that this has been my calling and it has been an honor for me to defend freedom of speech and freedom of faith. Personally, I, I have coped <laughs> to, to this timeline, but I'm worried that because this continues and, and goes on for years, it is some kind of warning to other people that what can happen if they use their freedom of speech. And I'm a little bit uh, worried about the effect of censorship to Finnish society for this long process. Can you take us back mm. um, to that day of the trial in 2022? Yeah. What was it like arriving at the court? Ah, oh, in fact, I, I have to admit that before the trial, the day before and the night before it, I was quite nervous <laughs> and it was a little bit difficult to sleep even. But when I arrived to the courthouse, there were a lot of supporters <laughs> praying and, and singing and showing support to me. So I was not nervous anymore. In fact, I, I felt very deeply that this is my privilege. I, I felt privileged to be there. Yeah, it wasn't people... just a quiet 
courtroom where there was no one watching, there was a huge uh, interest. Yes. And I remember coming to the court and the cameras were flashing yes. and the journalists congregated around you. And when the court session started, uh, I was in the other room listening to the proceedings. Yes. And for the first couple of hours, it was only the prosecution who was, you know, presenting all of their accusations. I remember they were putting Old Testament Bible verses yes. um, on the projection screen and saying what their issue was with these Bible verses. And so was there something that particularly shocked you that the prosecutors said in court? Yes, in, in fact, uh, the arguments of, of the prosecutor shocked me <laughs> even more than, than I expected because she took uh, many Bible verses that I had never even talked about it from Old Testament. Mm. And it was like he, she accused Bible <laughs> and she accused me that I, I believe in such a ridiculous book as Bible. Mm. And she accused me that, that my doctrine is love the sinner but hate the sin. And, and she said that this doctrine in itself it is insulting mm. because she took that if, if you call a people sinner, you, you think that they are inferior to other peoples. And, she, and, and what she said that if, if, you, if you blame deeds, then you blame the person. That it is impossible to make a division between people's uh, deeds and, and their identity. Mm. But it, it, it was absurd. It was really absurd because it is against common sense. I, in, 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 in court, I, I answered that I have five children and when I schooled them, when I raised them, I had too many times to blame some of them for their deeds. But it never meant that I would think that they are inferior or that I do not love them. Exactly. They didn't uh, lessen the, their value. And also in courtroom, when they convict some person yeah. for their deeds, it doesn't make in Finnish society that yeah. they are not valuable as persons. So I couldn't understand her thinking. Yeah, it seemed like there was really a vendetta against the Bible itself. Yes, okay, it was ahead. really about Bible. Yeah. At first she said that this is not an inquisition about faiths and beliefs. Yeah. But then she started from the Bible. The main judge had even to say to her that now it is, it is not a questioning about Bible. <laughs> you should question some other questions. It's almost like your tweet um, that was only a question and a picture of a Bible verse. And this extract from the radio interview that was taken completely out of context and the pamphlet that you wrote almost 20 years ago yeah. um, that the prosecutor also took statements yes. um, and put them together in a way that completely changed the context yes. of the whole pamphlet. Yes. For example, it was her main point that I think that some people are not equal with other people. But I have said for example, in my booklet, I have said it very clearly that all people are equal according to the Bible and also according to our constitution and they have equal value. So there were such claims that were against uh, my conviction and also against the Bible and, yeah. <laughs> and against our law. Yeah. And so how did you feel when all was said and done? All the arguments were said and it was now up to the judges to decide the case. How did you feel after the trial? Yes, I, I have to say that I was very grateful after the trial and very hopeful, very confident. <laughs> I was happy that I could have answered and my lawyer was very good. So I, I was confident, I was hoping for a good result, <laughs> for acquittal. But of course you could never know because all the process ha had been so peculiar. Uh, I, I would never have expected that police could start <laughs> the investigation. I, I would never have believed that the prosecutor general in fact uh, files 
these charges against me and that it goes to trial. I, I, I had always been optimistic, yeah. <laughs> so I, I couldn't be sure about the result. Yeah. Your case received a lot of media coverage. Yeah. So what was the reaction in Finland and outside of Finland to the trial? Yes, a lot of interest, really a lot of in in interest. And it was in all our newspapers, in, in radio, in all media, uh, in TV channels and social media. So it gained a lot of interest. And I was happy that there were a lot of media and I could tell my side of the story. I could tell what I had really said at and what I had really meant, because there were so much uh, false accusations about my sayings. Mm -hmm. And I, I could explain that I do not have any hate speech. I do not hate anyone. It is a question about love, not hate. So I felt that, thank you God, <laughs> that I can be here now. And I have this wonderful possibility to tell these Things. I was so happy for that because it yeah. was a difficult time for me yeah. <laughs> to live with these lies. You received support worldwide. Yes. Um, were you surprised that how many people have rallied in support of you for this case? And how important was the support of all these well-wishers? Yes. I have to say that I was very surprised for the support from abroad that there was so much interest in this case. I got thousands of messages of people who told that they are praying for me and praying for Finland. Also, I got messages from people who told that now they have started to read Bible. <laughs> they have started to read Romans, the okay. letter to Romans, that what is really there. And I also got messages from people who told me that they have found Jesus when they have started to read Bible and after, after my case. In fact, yesterday I got that, that kind of message oh, really? <laughs> to, to my email. So it, wow. it has been so, I think that this process has been in God's hands. <laughs> so he has made something good to happen. I have found that it has been a privilege, a great honor uh, to defend free speech and freedom of faith. I think now it is the time to fight for these freedoms. And yeah. the fight is going on. <laughs> Absolutely. No, the, like you said, the fight for free speech is really going on. Mm. Um, cases like yours have unfortunately been popping up all over the world. And yes. ADF International works on many such cases where expressing certain peaceful beliefs gets people censored. And mm. it's a very worrying trend. So why do you think your case um, is important for free speech, not just in Finland, but mm. for Europe and the world. Yes, um, I think that because Finland is a country that has so long roots in rule of law and in freedom of religion, freedom of speech, we have it in our constitution, we are a democracy, and, and we have also long roots in Christianity, <laughs> Christian church and, and Christian values. So many people think about that if something like this can happen in Finland, so why couldn't it happen in any European country or any similar country? And Absolutely, because <laughs> Finland tops the rankings in yes. many of the lists that, you know, look at adherence to the rule of law, or protections yes. on free speech or media freedom, press freedom, and freedom of expression. Yes. So like you said, if it can happen in Finland, it can really happen anywhere. Yes. You already talked a little bit about how it has impacted your life. So how has it impacted your life for better? And how has it impacted your life for worse? I have very deeply felt that God has given this as my calling mm -hmm. uh, to, to defend these freedoms and also to defend the message of the Bible and the gospel. So I'm happy that I have had a possibility to testify very publicly about my faith. But of course, it has had also <laughs> bad sides. It has taken a lot of my time, very much, <laughs> mm. because um, I have 
also been in parliament and we are just now living a time of crisis in Finland in many ways. So I have been very, very busy. I have <laughs> done very long days <laughs> in, in my parliamentary work and, and working with this case. Also, I'm sorry that it has taken my time as, as a mother and grandmother. I have 10 grandchildren mm -hmm. <laughs> who would need a lot of their grandmother. <laughs> and uh, of course, what has been most difficult ha have been those lies about my statements, about my views. But what I'm most worried is uh, the atmosphere of censorship, especially for young people. Yeah. Because when they see what happens when you cite Bible and tell the truth of the Bible for these topical issues, I have got letters also from young people who tell that they have to be silent about their faith, not to hinder their career or social acceptance. I'm so sad yeah. for those young Christians. So I hope that I would get acquittal in the appeal court very soon so that it yeah. would help people to be open about their faith. Of course, and we're all hoping for an acquittal, but like you said, it's the process itself uh, that is a warning to people yes. to be silent, to not talk about their faith. Yes. But what would the consequence of a criminal conviction be if you know this case doesn't go your way? I would say that it would be a catastrophe to freedom of speech and freedom of religion it would start a time of persecution. Because if my writings, if, if my pamphlet, if it is banned, then they should ban also the Bible. And that was what the police said. The mm -hmm. police who's, who is specialized in hate speech, he said in his statement that if the booklet of Päivi Rasanen would be banned, then also the distribution of the Bibles should be punished. And then we have also thousands of similar writings and, and speeches and radio programs and TV programs. Yeah. All these writings could be punished after that. Yeah. And that's why I'm ready to fight so long as it is possible, even to European Court of Human Rights. It is impossible to think the consequences what could happen after that kind of conviction. Yeah, it's, it's really chilling to think about it because your, your tweet, it was a question to your church. It didn't contain any insulting language. Mm -hmm. It didn't even mention anyone in particular. Mm -hmm. And you attached a picture of Bible verses. Yes. And that was the issue. It was those Bible verses that uh, the prosecution took offense at. And so really if the court decides that this type of um, expression of faith, this type of speech should be banned, mm -hmm. it really has consequences for yeah the entire Bible. And I have to tell that uh, the prosecutor general has also in public, in our main newspaper, mm -hmm. she has stated that if I am convicted, then it is still allowed to have the Bibles in the libraries. You can read them and you, you, you can give some presentations of, and, and you can discuss about the Bibles. But after the conviction, what is crucial is if you agree with the Bible. <laughs> so yeah. for Christians, the essence of Christianity is to agree with the Bible. She is targeting the heart of the Christianity, which is the Bible. Where it's ultimately not really about marriage and sexuality, like you said, but it's it's really about a question of free speech and yeah. whether we are allowed to say yes. our opinion and share our faith. Yes, and yeah. of course, of course, I have also a lot of supporters in, in Finland who are not Christians they may think in a very different way about these issues, but they are supporting me because they see a danger to freedom of speech in this case. 
Yeah. So this right is important for everyone. Absolutely. And so with what mindset are you going into the second trial? How are you preparing? I have very calm mind at the moment and I, I'm confident that it is again possible to get a victory, <laughs> to get the acquittal mm. from, from the appeal court. I'm grateful that I know that there are a lot of people who pray for this trial. I'm very happy for all the support and I have to say now that I'm extremely grateful for ADF because <laughs> the support and help, it has been so important, it has been crucial for me. Just from the beginning of the case that even that someone is interested <laughs> and interested to, to support me. I feel again that there is some purpose that this process continues and I believe that it, this is in God's hands, whatever happens. What would you like to say to those people watching the trial? Those who are supporting you, but also those who are still looking at this very critically? I would like to say that uh, the crucial issue in this case is the freedom of speech. And it is important to every human being that they have right to speak freely, that they have right to express their beliefs freely. That's why I hope that those also who are critical <laughs> against me that uh, they would defend the freedom of speech because they need it also. For everyone and for Christians especially, I want to encourage that now it is time to use these freedoms. It is time to be open about their faith. It is time to be open about what Bible teaches also about these topical issues that are in contradiction uh, to the ethos of this time. Because the more that you are silent, the narrower becomes the space for these freedoms. It doesn't help to be silent. <laughs> Especially young people now, young Christians, they need encouragement, they need support, they need prayers. In, in my heart, this is, this is the main issue. I want yeah. to encourage young people in their faith and, and, and speech. Great. Well, thank you very much, Kpevi. Thank you. Uh, we will, of course, continue supporting you at ADF thank International you. because free speech must prevail. So we wish you all the very best, Pavi. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful. Thank you.